Welcome to all you people just joining us. We're getting into the science of storytelling. The story begins in our brain and with the breakthrough science of mapping and decoding our neural circuitry. And here's a picture of an fMRI, a functional magnetic resonance image. And the fMRI is the primary tool scientists are using today to track blood flow that accompanies neural activity. The fMRI, fMRI creates this color-coded contrast which highlights where neurons are firing, and this is what scientists follow. And I've added for your viewing pleasure a picture of our neurons in action. We have between 86 and 100 billion neurons in our brain, and they're either on or off, they're firing or not firing in simple or extremely complex sequences. And scientists are now beginning to correlate patterns of neural firing with events like reading a book, drinking coffee, listening to a really boring PowerPoint presentation. And what they've discovered is that when we are victims of boring lists of facts, bullet points gone wild, our brain processes the language and decodes the words for meaning, but that's it. The brain centers get activated, but without context for retaining information, it essentially goes in one ear, out the other, just like the Stanford results so clearly demonstrated. But, and this is what's really cool, the fMRI shows a different picture when people tell stories. Not only do the same language and decoding centers activate, but other areas in our brain activate as well. For example, your motor cortex will light up when I describe a swimmer fighting against an ocean's undertow, as does your sensory cortex when I conjure up the sweet aroma of vanilla, as does your frontal cortex, as does the emotional region of your brain, the insula, when we feel the curiosity, anticipation, and pull of a story. And not only does my whole brain engage when I tell a story, but the fMRIs reveal that the very same areas are activated in your brain. And this extraordinary discovery is called entrainment or brain coupling, and it is the ultimate synchronicity. And when entrainment happens, our brains, which are designed to look for patterns, looks to relate that story to our own experience. And what this means is not only does story increase the likelihood that ideas, thoughts, and emotions are going to be planted into a listener's brain, it also means that the listener engages in co-creating that story with the speaker. So, for example, if I say to you, tell me about your first day on your current job, your whole brain goes to work accessing the sights, sounds, data, emotional experience to retrieve this memory for you in a nanosecond. And as you tell your story, our brains entrain, and my memory bank of my experience avails itself to me. So where are we today? Barbara and I spend our consulting time convincing clients to make the shift away from talking at people, dumping data, making lists of facts and features of what you or your product does, and to begin to craft and wrap your information in a story with context that carries a message, a purposeful meaning, and to put the whole brain of your audience to work.